Last week, I redesigned the Hippie Chick Noms website. You can see the design right here. I did that with Adobe XD. And in this week, I'm gonna be coding the entire thing up. Hi there, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks and tutorials. You might notice I have a new setup. Um, so uh, my old mic was always getting in the way, so I'm hoping this works better. It should also pick up the audio a little bit better. I have so much trouble with audio, so I'm hoping this improves the quality of my videos a little bit. I'm a bit less banging perhaps when I'm typing as well. I didn't have this when I coded things up, so they'll still be maybe a little bit there. Um, so as I said, we're going to be coding up this entire page and you might have noticed before you clicked on it that it's a long video. Um, and that's because I'm doing the entire thing in one shot. It's been a long time since I've designed a whole page like this because it, it does take a while to put together um, longer ones like this, whether it becomes a series or just one long video like I did here. But I think a lot of you guys want us, you know, are pushing towards being able to do this, and maybe some of you it's because you want to freelance. If that's the case for you, a while back, Kyle came to me and asked if I was willing to promote his um, freelancing masterclass bundle on my channel to, to my audience, and then, so he gave me access to everything, I went through the whole thing, I checked out all the material, and I think it could be really useful for my audience. I wouldn't be bringing this to you if I didn't think so. Um, the reason I think it could be useful is, first of all, it is for a this type of course, it is very affordable. A lot of courses, if you look at the freelancing stuff, can be quite expensive and probably for good reason because as soon as you land a client, you, you know, you land one client, you've probably paid for it. So in this case, the course is um, only $100, which for this type of course can be really affordable. Um, and it does a nice job for people who are just starting or trying to start in giving you some ideas and ways to do that and different techniques that you might be able to use to get started. So with the course, you get a, an ebook that sort of goes over everything I was just talking about, how you can get started, how you can start finding your first clients, which is always this, by far the hardest thing to do for anything, uh, is just getting your first couple of clients. And it does a few things. Um, he looks at it in ways that um, it's about building relationships, which it always is, but how you can make that first contact for the relationship when you don't have people around you that you can contact. So uh, that can be really useful. There's uh, invoicing templates and proposal templates. Uh, there's website templates. So if you want to use existing templates instead, you, there are existing templates that you can use to sort of spruce up and use those for your own clients, as well as a Slack and Facebook community. So you can hang out with other people who are have been through the course or, or who are trying to start their freelancing career who have started their freelancing career. So that's always super useful being able to talk to other people who have just gone through what you're trying to and getting even more help and advice from them. If this sounds awesome and it sounds like something you want to check out, the URL for it is studywebdevelopment.com forward slash freelancing. And the really awesome thing here too is if you use the coupon code KEV20, which is in the you know showing up on the screen now, there's also that in the description below and as, as is the link. Uh, if you use that coupon code, you will get 20% off. Full disclosure though, you will also, it is an affiliate link, so I will be getting a little... Uh, a little bit of that as well. But it could be a way to support the channel if uh, if you want to do that. So just full disclosure. But uh, again, I wouldn't be promoting this if I didn't think it could help some people out. And at the cost of the course, which you know it's a hundred dollars minus the uh, discount of twenty percent, uh, you you know one client and you've more than made up for the difference. And there is some genuine you know useful information in there that could help you out if this is where you are or the type of thing you want to be doing. So if you're trying to start freelancing, and I know a lot of people want to do it, even if it's just a little side gig, it's not a full-time thing, but you're just stuck on how to start, this can be a nice just little primer to get, get the ball rolling a little bit, because that's usually all you need at the beginning. But back to the what this video is about and the Hippie Chick Noms website. So we want to be... Um, so I just want to give full disclosure on it. On my short videos, or on when I'm looking at a specific topic, I'm always... I, you know, I'm scripting things out. I'm making sure I know the topic as well as I do. When I do these longer builds, sometimes they're a little bit, um, oh, just speaking of longer builds, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I have put timestamps for sort of the different sections down below in the description. So as long as you're on a PC or, uh, so as long as you're on a desktop computer, you can just click on any of those timestamps and it will bring you there. So if you want to come back to the video a few times, it's sort of like chapters throughout uh, that can just help if you need to revisit the video at any point because you can't watch it in one sitting. 
Um, but one of the reasons it is longer is because it's a bit more raw. It's not like the super scripted ones I do the other times. I am going to be making mistakes and fixing my mistakes. And a lot of you guys have said you love this. This is one of the things you like with my longer builds. I get lots of comments saying you like this about my videos, but usually people are either going to let you know when they really like it or when they really don't like it. I'd love to know your opinion on whether you like seeing this or not, but you're going to see like, okay, I made a mistake here. Let's go into the dev tools and this is how I can find how I made the mistake and do stuff like that because I don't want you just to be able to follow through exactly with what I'm doing. I want you to be able to learn from what I'm doing as much as possible. Um, I'm it does mean I jump around a little bit in the code because it's really my thought process. I want to share as much as possible the way I'm thinking as I'm going through a design. A few little details before we jump into it. I didn't worry too much about browser support. Um, I'm using CSS custom properties. I didn't use grid because I didn't really think it was needed for this layout, but I did use Flexbox. Um, but we get the whole site done. It's looking great. Uh, just if, you know, um, with the custom properties, you might want to build in fallbacks and there's some other things maybe using, I think I mentioned post CSS while I'm coding it up. So I wanted, I just wanted to get all through that just to make sure you really know what you're getting into for such a long video before you commit yourself to watching it. If this sounds awesome to you and you're all hyped up, I'm really hyped up. So let's just jump right into it. All right. So here we are in VS Code and we're ready to get started on our redesign. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm sorry for being overly excited there. I'm <laughs> Normally I'm not so hyped up in these things, um, but I'm excited for this project. So I'm really going to be doing this from scratch. So uh, I'm going to go and make a new file. I'm just going to call this index.html. And in I'm going to be using uh, one thing, but uh, with VS Code, we do have Emmet. If you don't have Emmet, that's cool. You can do this anyway. You can install it as an extension in other um, browsers. If you just do an exclamation mark and then push tab, you get your nice starting document there. And um, we'll just do HCN for now, um, just because I'm going fast. Uh, I want to add a style sheet here. So I'm going to do style. And again, I'm going to use Emmet. So I'm going to push tab on my keyboard. Um, what was I thinking? I don't want a style tag. I want a link. So let's do link and hit tab. And let's just do CSS slash styles.css for this. Um, now I want to link to that. So let's make a new file and I'm going to call it styles.scss. And I just realized I didn't make a folder for that. So I'll make a CSS folder and we'll drag that right in there. Super duper. Um, so now I can actually start. Um, you might notice just really quickly when I save a few things sort of changed, add some self-closing tags and the indentation might have changed. I am using uh, Prettier as well as an extension. So sometimes when I save, things might move around a little bit. Cool. So we're going to go and check everything out in a second. But I'm going to come over here to my style sheet. And I'm just going to paste in some code here and rearrange it. So this is from the original design. And this is the link to all the fonts. Uh, so let's grab that. Uh... And I'm going to bring the fonts as the very first thing that loads in. So we just have all the fonts coming in. Um, it's the exact same thing. The only thing is he was bringing in, I think one of these had an SVG font and the other one was the EOT. Um, we really don't need those these days, really. If someone's browser is that old, um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, so I took those off. Uh, you know, I, the WFF here is supported like way back to like IE9, I think. So um, you should be okay. So we'll leave all of that there. HTML, I'm just, because of how I like doing things, I'm going to put this up at the top. And I'm going to get rid of that because I'm going to have comments in here, but I'm doing this my way. <laughs> uh, cool. So that is the start. Now I have a color on there of black, which we don't actually have. All that is looking good. Let's just come back to here. That is good. So what I'm going to do is um, let's bring up our design actually. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep the design there so I can sort of go through as I'm coding it. Um, and I'm not gonna have preview the browser yet just cause I'm not gonna see anything. We have no styling. And then once we're done that, I will open it up in the browser when we start doing our CSS. The other thing just really quickly is um, I'm going to be doing this. Uh, I'm going to put some timestamps down below. So if you are following this or you have to come back later because you can watch the whole video in one shot, um, you can check out the timestamps for when um, I'm doing the HTML, the CSS, and maybe I'll break apart a little bit from there as well. Um, so this is actually a font that's being loaded in. Now we're loading in a whole font just for the logo. I'm not sure if it's worth it, uh, but I am going to leave it like that for now. But with the idea that maybe we could actually turn that into 
a just like a, an SVG at one point or something. I think it'd be a lighter weight than loading in a whole font. Uh, but what we're going to do now is that is a font for now, and I'm going to leave it like that. So it's an H1, and I'm going to give it a class of logo. Ligi logo. And it's hippie chick noms. Uh, that's right up there. Now, actually, all of this should be in a header. Uh, again, I'm just new header, push tab for Emmet there. And grab that in my header. I'm also going to include, what are we going to include in my header? We're going to include the navigation. So we can do a nav. Uh, we're going to do a UL with an LI with an A. So this is again Emmet. My A is inside my LI is inside of my UL. So the, the uh, multiplied by four because we have four links. And I'm just going to put if you control or command click, you can place your cursor in multiple places. And it's home about connect and products. Cool. I'm not going to be typing in all the text as we go. I'm going to sort of come back. We're just going to be worried about the structure right now. So there's the header. Cool. So now we're going to come down and we can do a main here. Um, I don't think I need a class on my main. We're just going to put in a main tag because it is good to have that. Um, and then here we can have an H2 of, no, I'm actually going to look here for a second. I have a font size. It's all the same there. Okay. So that's going to be a section title. You can definitely just style like your H1, your H2, your, you know, you don't need classes on everything. So especially because, you know, all these are all going to be H2s anyway. I like doing it just because when I'm in my CSS, it just makes it so much easier to be able to know what I am uh, styling instead of just like, you know, what exactly is an H2? Well, in this case, it's my section title. Um, and being a section title, I should probably make an actual section in here. Uh, so this will be section intro. Whoops, section. I don't even know if this needs something on it, but we're gonna still, we're gonna do it. Uh, section, we'll just do intro. And uh, so we have the section, my class title, we are Northern Ohio's first oil free and sugar free granola company. So we want uh, oil free and sugar free. So I'm just going to do that uh, shift command or com shift control P. And uh, that brings up this Emmet wrap with abbreviation. So if I do that and I put in span, you can see it's wrapping it in my span there. And we can do the same thing here. Span. Uh, cool. There we go. So save that. I might put a different um, font on that at one point or a class on these, but we'll leave it like that for now. Um, so that's my section title. This is my intro and we're actually going to do another section here. So section about us. Uh, we're going to have in here is a little bit different because about us is actually going to end up being flex. So we have like a you know, we have to use a f display flex to get our two columns here. So we need two divs in here that are going to be treated, treating our backgrounds. And then in there, we're going to have our content. Um, I'm also wondering if I should use flex or use grid just because of the spacing that's on, like to keep, I could use FR units, which I love, um, or, to, you know, set up a, a four column grid instead. So I might do that, but um, I still need each one of these to be wrapped in a div. So... Ooh. I'm just thinking I have my big one, I have my left box and my right box about us. So this could be um, about us. And this is Emmet where you do like a double underscore. So it's saying it's something that belongs inside of about us. Um, about us. Um, I don't want to put heading just because, I mean, it is sort of, but I'll just do intro. Because in there, I'm going to put my H2. This one, hmm. The styling of this one is so different from the other ones. If I did section title, I'm going to leave it as a section title for now, but I'm probably going to end up changing that just because the style is completely different on it. But I'm going to come back to that when I'm styling it because I might come up with an idea as I'm working. I still think it should be an H2. It's sort of the, the title for, for this and even thinking you 
this instead of a div, this technically could be a header. Um, if you wanted to go with like a bit more semantic um, text, because in general your heading will be inside a header in, when you're inside of a section. So you don't need just a header that's at the very top of your site. You can have headers inside of sections as well. So why not? We, we can be a bit more semantic. On this side though, it's just going to be a div. So this div can be about us uh, content or body. I'm actually going to change it to body because it's content is a bit too vague. Body. Body text is like your paragraph text and stuff. And we have two paragraphs in there. Super. So that's that section done. We're going to have next a section of order online. So in there, you know, again, we could do like a header if you wanted to with an H2 of uh, section title. If I did that there, we could do it there. Uh, there's a paragraph. And what I'm going to do for th these, which are going to be turned into buttons, is I'm actually going to make a button group. And in my button group, and I'm doing this because I want to use display flex to make columns, but it's they're also going to have to stack on top of each other when we're on mobile. Um, so I think this is going to be the easiest way to do it. So a button group. And then I'd have my uh, A, BTN, and we'll call it BTN primary. We'll make that green our primary color. And we need three of them, so times three. That's it for there. And then we're going to have our section um, product showcase. And H2 section title. And then we need that. So that's our there. So then here, what we'll do is we'll have a products, which can then have dot product. Inside the product, there'll be an H3 plus an image with a class of product image. Plus, I'll just do p star 2. I think that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to go back just to before I hit tab on that. So we need three products. So I can put a star 3 here. So it's going to make three products. Each one of those products will have all this stuff inside of it. Uh, 2. There we go. Perfection. And last but not least, we need our buttons there. Um, because I'm using flex for my button group, I think uh, if I do a BTN group again, I just want to make sure that's what I called it before. Yeah. Uh, if I have my button group, I'm actually gonna make two of them. Uh, so the first button groups is going to be a BTN and I did BTN. We'll call the purple my accent color. And so that one's going to be all by itself. And then we're gonna have another button group dot btn group that will have our three buttons and I could just copy this button group there because we already did all that work why do it again cool um, and last but not least we're gonna come down here and we need a footer and the footer I didn't actually do yet <laughs> which is cool um, if we go to the original design we had a bit of content in there so we just had the navigation again uh, so I can grab that. I'm not actually going to put it in a nav tag because the nav is supposed to be reserved for your primary navigation. Um, and we'll put some, we'll call this class equals footer nav. And I think we might do another list in here uh, for their social media because I think there was a social media in there. A, how many do we need? We need I'll do four. I might have to change that. And this one will be class equals footer social. Cool. There we have that. So now let's actually go and put all the text in here. All right. So with all of that done, what I'm going to do is I have the live server as an extension inside of VS Code. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. And it's going to launch Firefox for me with my site. Cool. 
there we go. So uh, let's shrink that down so we can actually go like that. And I'm also gonna open up my dev tools and we're gonna go to responsive just because I wanna start with a responsive. Um, let's just do Galaxy 9 is fine. And we're going to actually separate the window just so I can have a bit more room. I'm gonna keep this off screen, but anytime I need it, I'll bring it up so we can actually see what I'm doing in there. Um, Nice thing with Firefox is you can actually close the dev tools too once you're in responsive mode and it stays in there on like Chrome. Um, but we'll put that off just so it's faster for me to pull on and off when we need it. Um, and there we have, that's what our current site looks like. So not, nothing too fantastic, but it is working, which is great. Um, um, one thing I've also done is I have brought in the images to the image folder. You can see because I actually put the images in and we should see them. There we go. Um, so we can actually see the images are working just fine. Uh, so that's good. And I've also brought in the fonts. So our fonts should be uh, looking at what we want them to be looking, I think, because I think we have Crimson Text set as the default. One way, if you're not sure if it's actually your font <laughs> that's loading in or not, change the um, this to like something different. <laughs> and if it still looks the same, you know you're uh, you're off to the bat saw serif. Um, but yeah, it's working. So we know we're good. So this should be a serif fallback. Awesome. Um, now before I really jump into the CSS, so if you want to skip this, check the time codes below, but I'm going to be loading in um, all my variables. So root, and we're going to create some uh, some awesome stuff here. If you're not used to this, I do have some videos on this, uh, on setting up CSS custom properties. And if you have already checked those out, I also have an article up on CSS tricks that you can check out that goes into some cool uses um, and fun things that I'm, I don't think I'll be using necessarily on the site, um, maybe for my buttons, but I don't think so, but you can check it out. Um, so in here, I need my colors. Let's open up XD again. I only have three colors um, that I wanna worry about and I'm actually gonna make three boxes here because I didn't load my colors into anywhere, but I have them here. So I have my purple, I have this, and I have my gray. Uh, those are the only ones we might end up needing more than that. I'm also gonna set up some font families and stuff. So the easiest thing here, whoops, not my layers, in my assets, select them all, new color, and there's, don't, oh, I had a border. <laughs> on everything. So it brought, whoops, it brought that border color in along with it. Um, so we can just push that to the side, make that a bit bigger. Oh, I can't see it. So there we have, it's a bit small and actually copy. <laughs> so uh, let's just do color we'll call it color text. Not the best name for it. That's my 5A, 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 whoops. We're gonna have my color primary, which is gonna be the green, and we're gonna have our color accent, which is gonna be the purple. Uh, so that one I already copied, and we can get this one, copy. And those are the three that I used in my design. Uh, we also have our different fonts that we're gonna wanna use. So I have my font family, uh, we'll call it title and we have my font family sa. I'm just gonna put sans because it's a sans. Oh no, we use it a serif font. We can do serif. Um, and this is what I want here. So we can actually cut that out. So if ever he wants to change the font, we can do it in one place and it's gonna go almost everywhere. So the font family on here will be my var font family serif. Cool, cool. Okay, and then what we want to do, I'm also going to say on here, um, the color is my var color text. I used the wrong one. No, I didn't, that looks too late. We might change that, uh, that color once we see it in the browser. My titles, my font, my font on my titles, whoops, isn't in my CSS, it is up here, and it's this one right there, copy that paste that in there and uh, we're gonna add in what should we call this BF narrow I'm just gonna do a uh, serif fallback on it it is a little bit decorative but if it didn't load in I'd sort of want a saw serif coming in there um, instead of some funky font or something um, 
simple fallback like that. Now I am using CSS variables, the browsers or custom properties, I should say their browser support is not perfect in these. So just be careful with that. Um, we could come through and build in some fallbacks for all of this, or we could use a plugin, um, or we could use something like post CSS, which I'll be exploring in a future video at one point. Okay, so I think we're ready to get started. I'm actually going to leave this off screen so you're not going to see it just because I, ha I have a bit of limited uh, screen real estate, but I am going to be looking at that while I'm coding up. Um, oh, should I? Why not? We're already using custom properties, so font family logo, because you never know. He might want to use it somewhere else. We're only doing the home page, but I am going to try and make the um, everything I do here, um, if that doesn't load, would we load in? I don't like the script font. I'm going to do a sans serif here too, uh, just because I don't like the default sort of weird stuff that sometimes gets loaded into things. Um, okay, cool. Um, uh, let's just, uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm just not used to having this on the HTML to be honest, but it's all good. The color's a little bit too light. I'm going to darken this up just a touch. Uh, just a touch. I'm going to make it. I think we'll do something like that. Um, I want to make sure my contrast is high enough, especially on the smaller text. Uh, let's just go on here and font font size is going to be 1.125 rem as a default to make it a little bit bigger. Could maybe even pump that up a little bit, but I think we'll we'll stick with that. Um, okay, so let's just, I'm going to be jumping around a little bit. No, let's just set up our typography. So here, let's do uh, typo typography. Um, so we already have a, a lot of it done, but we have our, I'm actually going to do h1, h, no, h2, h3. Uh, font family is var font family title, line height. I'm going to put one for now. I know I did it less when I actually designed it. Oh no, we're going to make that a lot smaller. 0 0.8, I think. Yeah. Okay. That font is a bit weird for the line height. So that's fine. 0 0.8 is going to work out fine. And the font size, I could build in some custom properties here. I did it 60 pixels. Um, but again, I did my design really as just like a template to start from. So I'm going to do on here, let's do, um, cause even it say I did 60 pixels and I'm going to switch that off. You know what? <laughs> I was wondering if it'd be too big on, I'm missing. I didn't put the, I'm missing some content. One second. I thought I put it all in. Oh, I got, we are, we believe. Ah, I completely skipped a section there. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to put this in the main as my section. I wanted this to be my intro section. We'll do a section. We'll call it hero. Um, H2 section title. I got mixed up there while I was doing everything. Real food. I'm going to put a period on real food too. I'm not sure if they originally had it. There we go. Okay. Uh, so if I do that, 60 pixels, uh, will be like five rem. That doesn't actually bother me. Oh, I don't want that on there. So let's, okay. Whoops. So you might be wondering why I'm putting this on my H's and not on my section classes that I came up with. Um, I like just setting, so you might have something that's not a section title that is an H2 and H3. We still want it to have some similarities. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start getting a bit more specific. Uh, so let's just say H2, we can do our font size is the five RAM. We'll see if it's too big, but I think that might actually work out. It might be a little bit too big. Go with four. I think that'll work better on mobile. Okay. Um, I also like to do, let's just come up to here. H1, H2, H3. I'm going to go up to H4 just in case it's used on other parts of the website. Um, also, I forgot my paragraph and whoops, paragraph, a margin of zero because um, the default margins <laughs> really bug me. 
uh, and then we can reset those as we go from there. So we have my H2 and 3, that's good. So this is sort of like some general stylings that I like putting on stuff. Um, it looks all crowded and stuff when you do that with the margin zero, uh, but it does fix it. <laughs> a lot of the problems you might run into and you do need to add a margin bottom back into your paragraphs. Uh, so on my margin bottom, my paragraphs can be like point, I usually do a bit smaller. Then my content, that looks pretty good. Awesome. Um, okay, so let's start styling everything up here. I think we're good to go and I might have to come back up, but I'm gonna come here and we're just gonna say uh, home page styles. Cause I think everything I'm doing here is gonna be um, some stuff I'm I'm gonna my buttons and stuff. So, you know, we can have some more general things, buttons and all of that, but I'm gonna style those as we get to them because I find it easier to work that way. All right, so we have a few things to do. Actually, um, I have my buttons and my homepage styles, but I have a few other general sort of things that I like to do. Um, my images display block that I get rid of that annoying like little space if you have an image do I have any and underneath every image you always have a little space uh, so I'm going to do that and max width 100% um, so there we go at least my images are nice and responsive now and uh, what else can we do uh, we already have my box sizing okay so that's going to work Perfectly. So I think we can start on my homepage styles now. Um, so the first thing is here where we have our no sugar added, no oil, all real food. And that, oh, we have my navigate. I'm going to come back to the navigation because it's not actually in the way. Um, actually, well, I said we were going to do that, but we should do our navigation, right? Uh, navigation. Um, so my nav. And in my nav, we have, uh, I'm gonna do a display of flex. I just saw I only had one bullet point and I was really confused. I think when I did my Emmet, uh, you were probably going, Kevin, what are you doing? <laughs> um, made a little mistake there. So we need LI. And what's the easiest way to do this? I'm just gonna do boom, 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 and close, close LI. Okay, and then we don't need this one anymore. Get rid of that, hit save, there we go. Uh, that's more what we were sort of expecting. So my nav is, not my nav, my nav UL uh, will be a display flex, so they actually go next to each other, and a list style of none. I'm just wondering if, let's do a nav A. Uh, I'm gonna do a nav L, no, nav A. Uh, display inline blocks. So we can give them some size. Padding of, I don't know, 0.5M, just to give them some size. It makes it a bit easier to click on stuff. This also needs our margin of zero, padding of zero. Since it's a list, we want to get rid of that as a bit of a default. And let's do a justify a content space between. Uh, no, space around, I think, makes more sense for navigation. Um, it's not really a typical mobile nav, so we might... I didn't plan out the mobile. I'm going to leave it like this because I don't want this to be about building a navigation. I want to style the rest of the page. If you're after navigation styles, I have a few different videos on it, and I have another one planned uh, that will have drop-downs and stuff like that. So um, let's keep going. The nav A, also the color of them will be... Uh, my var color primary. And I had them black in the original design, but I think I'd like to give them some color. That looks okay. Text decoration of none. I'm gonna give them a hover. So nav a hover uh, color can be var color accent. Um, so we can get just a little, and you know what, we'll add the text decoration of underline. And when we have the hover, I'm also going to do a um, focus. 
there we go. <laughs> I can tab through on those. Perfect. Uh, this should also actually, I didn't put it, but I'm also going to make this a link just because people are used to being able to click um, on the navigation, um, the, the logo. So class, should I do it like that? No, I shouldn't do that like that. <laughs> I'm wrapping. So what I was doing wrong there is I was wrapping my uh, a link around my H1, which is a no-no because -no, links are inline and this is a block level element. So the inline should be here. So this would be my um, a href can be uh, it'd be index.html and my close a will go right there. So that means we should also be, we need to change the font anyway. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. I'm going to come right here for my logo. So dot logo. Yeah, I'm going to do logo and then we'll do this as color. Uh, should I do it all here? Uh, no, we'll do the color and all. Mm, but let's change the font. Font family is a var font family logo and logo a font uh, text decoration of none. The font size actually looks pretty good. Color can be black and text. Uh, whoop. We can just do a simple text align center on the H1. There we go. Um, so that works out well. I'm going to also, let's just come here on my nav itself. Nav my nav, let's do header padding of 1m0. And I'm going to put 2m on the bottom, I think. We might change that, but we might come back. So that's just giving me a bit of space on the top and the bottom. Um, good. And I, yeah, just really quick, I have a bit of padding on the links here, just so if you're sort of, you know, for mobile devices, it makes it a little bit easier to click on stuff. Um, okay, so homepage styles now. So I have my dot hero, which has a background image on there. So background, whoops, back, yeah, background is, um, if you're putting a background image, you can also give a background uh, color, just so I'm gonna do var uh, color accent. If the image doesn't load for some reason, you actually have like a, somewhere that you know something they can load in because we have white text we want to make sure that we can still read that white text i think it's that one my monkey is there oh i didn't do the dark color okay we're gonna do i'm using variables here so i'm also going to use a blending mode because why not uh da, da, da. so background oh so that means my color is actually going to be i'm gonna do like a three 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 so if it doesn't load now, it's still gonna work. Uh, and then we can also do a background blend mode of multiply, probably. Multiply is always where I start. <laughs> that works. And the color can be white and text align center. Good, I forgot something. I'm so used to <laughs> uh, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. I need to have my body here, body margin of zero. Uh, just because everything was off the side of my screen. So the background blend mode, I do have a video on that. If you want to check it out, there should be a card popping up for it, but it lets us blend the image in with the color. So it's always nice. Um, if you're used to Photoshop's blend modes, that sort of, that's what is going on. There's all the different choices there. I don't know if Safari's updated to support all of them. There used to be a few that weren't supported, but all the, the mo you know, the big three are usually multiply screen and overlay, and they're all supported anyway. Um, text align center. We need some padding on this padding 1m No, we need more than that uh, Paddings mean viewport height. I think let's do like 25 viewport height zero for left and right Too much 15 we might come in with a mobile style after to um, on the big screens. I think I'll do that uh, On the original design we had he had a background attachment fixed so we can try that background Attachment fixed and one thing I didn't do but we're gonna need it for the large screen sizes is background size of cover um, So there we go, there's the fix actually it's working out well We'll see what that looks like when we get to the bigger sizes we might need to put in my right click keeps going, but I'm not right clicking um, 
so anyway, I think that works. It sort of keeps that same style that we had before. We can always, you know, if you don't like the background attachment fixed, you can turn it off. No big deal. But our monkey sort of faded away enough in there. Um, I'm wondering if I went with a 555 on this, actually. No, it's going to show it more because of the way multiply works. Um, and if I went darker, I'm going to stick with the 333. I think... Um, in the original design I had, if I bring that on screen, you can see it's a little bit more like grayed out than what I have here, but I think this is actually easier to read the text anyway, so we'll stick with that. Cool, I might add a little bit, just because you want to make sure that this never touches the side, so I'm going to add 1M of padding on the left and right. It pushes it on two lines, which actually makes it a bit easier and better to read there. Um, but it's also going to, uh, yeah, it just makes sure that we always have a space on the left and the right so our text is never touching right on the sides. Cool, so I think that's done. After my hero, we have this, uh, if we come and look, it's a really simple section there. So if we come and look at the markup again for that, um, it's my intro, I have my section title. So this is where my typography does come in a little bit, but I'm not gonna, it's sort of styled pretty good, and I just used a span on that. I'm wondering if I should put a class on there. I guess I said I would. Um, so class can be text green. Uh, actually text, I said green, but we'll do primary, which will make more sense. Um, I'm using primary instead of green, just because green is my primary color, but by putting green, if ever you change your design and you don't want green as your primary anymore, it doesn't make sense if this is called text green and all of a sudden it's yellow over here. So by doing text primary, it just makes it so if you change the color, your markup still sort of, your class naming and all of that still makes sense. Uh, so we have my intro uh, padding in this case. And I'm wondering, honestly, I might do, uh, so that's my navigation logo that's all my typography this is sort of general layout stuff i might just do a section as like a default of padding i don't know we'll do like 5m zero left and right and see what that looks like uh this is double here but we're having switching background colors a little we'll do like a four um just trying to think okay we're gonna do that's our default so for a section, it'd keep that off. I'm just wondering if we go back to the original design, we have text align center, text align center, not text align center. This has text align center. Should we have it as a default on the whole site even? And then we override it? No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do it for this section and that one. Um, that I'm not going to do here, because again, this would do everything, but by doing it, if ever you're coming back to make changes to it, um, you might be able to argue I just find for things like center. So the intro padding will stay the same, but I will do my text align center. This is somewhere where you could also just come in like in your typography and have a text center class or sort of like what you see in bootstrap that has the text align center and you just add that anywhere you're using it by all means, if that's how you like working, it's sort of like an atomic way of working a little bit, but um, it definitely works great. I'm jumping around a little bit just cause I'm, I'm how I see things. So I, I got that working and now we need to come up to my typography section here. That's my logo. So I'm going to come after my paragraphs. I'm logos. I'm going to leave my logo there. Um, but this is my text primary to be color var color primary. There we go. Cool. And now we can come down to this next section. Now this next section is the weird one a little bit but we're gonna play around with it. So if I look at the layout of this one, uh, what's weird about it is the font sizes are all completely different than everywhere else. So maybe that was a mistake on my part when I was designing it, but I, I see maybe I can make that an H3 actually. Uh, maybe that would make more sense and keep that as a small. I think I might do that because it's, I think I also called it the section title. Let's go check. Uh, I did call it a section title and I'm wondering if I should, maybe it would be like section, what is, hmm. Title. I haven't even used this style. <laughs> Section title small. It could stay as an H2 because I do think it's just as important. If you think of the document outline, um, 
it would make sense. I'm just trying to think like you have the H1 is always the most important thing. And you could argue this should be the H1, but I'll leave the name of the company as the H1. Um, then we have this H2. You always have to think of the document structure a little bit. So like, is this like a, almost like a subsection of this? No, it's sort of its own section. Then we get to this. We are, to, we are Northern Ohio's first oil-free and sugar-free granola company. See, this could be an H3 because you could argue like we are in a new section, but I don't think the sectioning model thing actually ever took off. Whatever, I'm going to leave it and just do section title small. We're just going to stick with that and keep it as an H2 to keep things a little bit simpler. So right here, I'm going to do it. I always do all my like generic tag selectors first, and then I sort of go in order of importance, I guess. Uh, so section title small. Font size will be, we'll try three rem to start with, and we'll see how that goes. Save that and save this, and that should change. That feels about right. Now my intro, so let's go back down to where I was. My intro, and uh, not my intro, now we're into about us. So that's my new section. The background for the whole thing will be var color accent. Whoops, not text, accent. Good. Now the padding's going to have to change because I'm doing that for like this whole thing, but I'm going to add my background image only to here, which um, I'm going to split my windows actually here because I keep going back and forth and I actually I prefer, uh, I keep going back and forth here. Let's split this down. And I don't need this open as much, but I just don't want to have to be jumping back and forth on the files. Um, we have about us intro. So this is going to be a display flex for sure. Display flex. And then this will be a flex, flex direction row column. I always mix those up. Don't know about you. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is just I like to find, even if it, like, I just did two lines of CSS to keep it looking exactly the same. I just find it a little bit easier to work once you get into your media queries of just redefining flex directions instead of then making it display flex. Um, I guess it's just the way I think and the way I work. But it, it also opens up all, like, the flex possibilities and the different things we can do with flex. So I prefer working that way. Color for this whole section is obviously going to be white. It's a little bit tough to read, eh? Hmm. I might make that purple color a little bit darker. I, I find that hard to read. It's also partially the font, so maybe. Because this isn't terrible, it's still not super easy to read though. Um, so what if I made the accent color here? Problem is it also changes um, depending on the browser that you're using. Where's my color picker? There we go. If I make that a little bit darker. This is definitely becoming easier to read. Um, this is one section where, let's open up Chrome, where I have this loaded into. I have it live previewing there as well. Uh, one nice thing about Chrome is there, uh, this little thing, it gives you contrast ratios. So it's, it's saying it's high enough contrast. Maybe it's just me and I can't, I have bad eyes. Uh, <laughs> it's also, it would be on a phone, so it would be closer to us a little bit. So. And this font isn't the easiest to read though. What I'm actually going to do, let's, we don't need that right now, um, is on this font. So I'm going to actually come uh, H2, H3. I'm also going to do a letter spacing of maybe even like two pixels might be too much, probably. One. It's a tough font to read, um, but I think that makes it a little bit better. Let's try adding that background image in there too. So that's all the way down at the bottom. So that was our about us intro. Did I change? I just want to check something. That f it still looks a bit small. I'm going to boost my font size a little bit here. I like that a bit better. About us intro background image was URL images. I, I called it granola BG. Let's save that. 
Uh, my padding's a little bit off. So this, because all my sections have padding, we do have to overwrite that. So padding will be zero. And then I can bring that same padding onto here. Padding of 3M, 1M, I believe is what I did. Cool. It's actually not, uh, I find it a little bit easier to read now. Um, the small, I'm going to make even smaller. So that would be, um, I guess I should put that in my section title, small. Uh, you'll know I, I do jump around a lot when I'm doing my CSS. So I'm going up and down now, and hopefully while you're watching it, it's not too annoying. But it's really just to try and stay organized as possible. If I was in SAS instead, I'd be jumping between different files. Um, so this, whoops, I'm so used to doing SAS, I keep wanting to just come in here and write like small and do a nested thing like that. Uh, I'm, I've become so used to it now. But no SAS on this one, just CSS title small small it's a little redundant but <laughs> uh, font size will be like 0.7 m I don't know what the default is for small actually line height line height of one. Oh, it's 0.7 is the line height coming from I'm just using my inspector if you remember that's off screen right now but I think as I'll bring it up I'm just I'm clicking this thing and then hovering. The line height because... Okay, what if I did a display block on this? I know it might look a bit weird. That's going to make it work. Because it's an inline by default, the line height I don't think was actually going to work. So if I turn that off now, it should be okay. I'm going to leave it like that for now, just so they're always on separate lines. But I don't know if that's going to look good. Um, I might do a text align center. I'm starting to rethink my text align mint choices. Uh, just because everything on, I'm really looking at maybe everything is going to be text align center at small screens. So let's, no, I'm going to leave that there. There's a few places where I might leave it. Intro, I think I'm actually going to take this off, which means I can delete that whole intro thing. I don't need anything on it for now. Um, and that means all the way up. Text align center. That I think looks a lot nicer, especially with the way this is broken. It still gives it like an okay feeling at mobile screens. We're so used to everything being like that. Um, and then my intro and my about us body and that padding once again, 3M, 1M. Super. I think that works. Um, I might do actually 3M, 1M, 1M and the same thing, but the other way around here and then 3M on the bottom. So it's going to be 3M of padding on the top one on the sides, one here, and then one here, one on the sides, but then the full three on the bottom, just so these feel a bit more linked uh, together. And these two, I'm actually making like a 1.5. It's a little bit tight. Not sure, not sure. I definitely want to test this on my phone before I say like, this is final. Cause if you're doing it and you're in this responsive view, it's fine while you're coding it all up. Um, but definitely, definitely, definitely be look, look at this stuff on your phone at the same time. And um, even this oil free and sugar free, I don't like that it's breaking there. So I might, I'd be tempted to try some different stuff, uh, for that. But overall, I think that's going to work well. So let's move on to the order online. That actually is working. Actually, you know what? I said I wasn't going to do anything for section title. I'm going to do one thing for my section titles. No, I'm not. Oh, you know what? This one is that color. Uh, but this section title was green. This section title was green. Oh, actually, okay, we have we have my helper class. I was really tempted to just say all section titles are green and then overwrite it for my my first one here. But we did create that helper class, so we will use it section title and text primary and we can do the same thing down here product showcase no section title oh i never put this some of our products gotta spell prod cuts products 
Um, and text primary. There we go. So that should whoop, scroll down. There we go. Super order online. So the only thing it's missing here is our three buttons that we need. Uh, and I did the buttons. Oh, man, I, I said I was going to do everything. <laughs> I missed a few of them, right? Uh, that's okay. Uh, order. Uh, I'm going to start with email, actually. Email. I don't know. You could Facebook and Instagram. And then we have to style the buttons. <laughs> I was like, why don't I see my buttons? They just look like links. The whole point of this is so we are actually styling everything, right? That's why you're watching this video. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit tired. I had a long week. Okay. Let's see. Um, so my buttons are going to be dot BTN. We'll be padding. I usually do like a one to three ratio ish. So 0.75M to like 2.5 M and we play play it by there. Um, I always tweak these a little bit. So we're gonna do that. And I'm wondering, my font is kind of funky so I might put round corners on it, but I'm gonna wait until I see it first. I didn't do it in the original design, but I might do that here. Um, padding is good. The color is always gonna be white for the text. Text decoration will always be none. Good, and then my button primary will be background of our color primary. Good, I forgot my display inline block. Oh, I made button groups and I'm not using it. So we also want my I'm going to put it right at the top because I'm not doing much with it. Button group is just going to be a display flex, I think. I don't need anything else on it. Uh, I do. Flex wrap is wrap. There we go. So they're not actually there. And we'll do... Um, so yeah, by default, flex doesn't wrap, so it, it overflow the side, which is really annoying. So <laughs> by default, everything ends up getting, if it's a flex, I'm, I'm generally putting a flex wrap on it. I'm going to show a cool trick in a second. Actually, let's do it right now. Um, if we have a button plus a button, let's add a margin, margin left of 0.5M. Is that going to work? It does, but it's a little broken <laughs> on this layout. Um, and margin top. No, it's not going to work. Ugh. Do all my buttons, all my buttons get a small margin. Margin of 0.5M0, just for now, so we can space them out a little bit. Um, so this trick would work on big screens. So if I see how like, it's giving me my space in between. Let's do an align, uh, justify content center, just so my buttons are always in the middle. Whoops, wrong one over here on my button group. So it centers it on the screen. Um, so what this is doing is it's saying a button plus a button, which means a direct sibling. So if there's a button followed by a button, the second one will get a margin on the left of 0.5M. So then if there's another one after it, this one will get the margin left here. But this first one isn't getting any margin on it. But at the small screen sizes, that's going to cause a problem, except now it's working. <laughs> okay, because I'm doing it's still not going to be perfectly centered, though. Do I just... I could just have these as display block and then only do this at large screens. Maybe we'll do that. So by default... Oh, a display block. There's still flex children though. Uh, which would mean... Flex direction is column. Actually, that sort of works by doing that. Um, I don't really need the justify content either. It's not doing anything. That might be the best thing. So they're stretching to fit on the main axis now. So they're stretching to fit on the main axis, which works really well. So if you're not sure, flex items always stretch on the main axis. And normally the main axis is up and down. But because I've changed the flex direction, the main axis is left to right now. 
or horizontal and so they're stretching horizontally and I think it sort of makes like a button block a little bit like I want to do with my purple one after so I think that's actually going to work really well um, I also want to change so all the way down at the bottom of here again we need our I just want to know what I called this group order online order online so this should have a background of I didn't make a color for this uh, a a something probably AF 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 we'll see that might be too dark that's uh, too dark this is where instead of like messing around or even with I could use my color picker here actually so we can come in I think somebody asked me in another video how I'm doing that it's still a bit too dark I think it's native. I don't think I have an extension for this. You just have to hover over it for a little while and then it just sort of kicks in. I want it to be pretty subtle, but just enough so we can actually see that there's a difference there. Cool. That works for me. Okay, so we have some of our products. Um, for the products, I still actually, let's go look at my buttons for a second. Am I going to keep them square or should I round them? I think I'm going to round them. I'm a little bit ADHD here. I really want to show you how I make a site and sort of the thought process that goes into it for me. Uh, buttons are a little bit lower. Uh, let's add a little border radius. Border radius 0.25m might be too much. No, that's actually perfect. Uh, 0.5 is going to... See, I find that a bit too much. I'm going to go, I don't know. Okay, we're going to stick with that. 0.35M for my button. Border radius looks good. Um, so I think I'm still going to make these into cards. So if we look here, I did like products, and then I have in my individual product. So just to help separate them a little bit, I think what we'll do is my products, I don't have anything, but my product will. Um, or that's not true. Products is going to be display flex, and then we're on mobile, so flex direction will be column. So we shouldn't see any real change when I do that. And then my dot product, my product can have a um, my original design. I screenshotted what he'd originally done with the original design because I thought it worked well but he had the white with like a gray background, but because I already have my gray, I guess I could switch that to white, but I sort of like going white, purple, gr like something different. So I have white, gr anyway, it's just me. Um, but my individual product here will give it a background of, I think we'll just stick with this. I could turn that into a variable maybe if I refactor it a little bit. Um, so I want to see what that's going to look like. And then padding of 1M, it might be too much at the small screen sizes. Nope, I think that's good. Border radius of, I'll stick with the 0.35. And again, this could become uh, a variable as well at one point if everything is getting the same border radius on it. Okay, I think that works out okay. I'm not, I was going to say I don't, I might change my idea here just because the, the images are white. Bananas for coconuts. I might move that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this here. I'm going to give those a class too. That's going to be like product title. Um, and I'm going to take the padding off. Ooh, if I take my pad, because what I was going to do is actually have the image. I think if I do this product, let's make this a lot bigger just because it's going to demonstrate something. And I'm going to change the color here uh, so we can actually see what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Um, so I have the padding that's off, but are we really? <laughs> um, anyway, at the top here, oh, we can't see it at all. Let's put a border. Is that going to work? Yeah, border one pixel solid red just so we can see okay so you can see my image is actually sticking off of the sides here i'm wondering if this is a good idea because i have a background color border radius just if i do an overflow of hidden it's going to stop the you know now my image is inside of that space and box 
shadow. I'm thinking instead of having a background color on it, I might do a box shadow of zero, zero, or should we move it down a little bit? Say 10 pixel, uh, I'll do, we'll start with zero, zero, a blur, a pretty small blur. We'll try one M and RGBA zero, I just go with a black zero, zero, zero point two, which is a pretty strong shadow and we can turn off my border and turn off my background. Cool, I actually think that's gonna work okay. It creates enough of a separation. We can see that it's, it's, it's sort of like a card that's standing out a little bit. Um, the only problem with doing this is I now need to change my markup a little bit because, well, I could give my text and my title some padding, but in this case, I'm just gonna go into all my cards. So I'm just control or command clicking to multi-place my cursor. So I can add in a div class equals product content and then two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we can come all the way down. Oh, it's not scrolling. Okay, that's okay. Um, fine print and then, oh no, where am I? Did I do that properly? Product content, yeah. And product content, good. So at the end of each one, product, product content. Yeah, where's, oh, I'm so confused now. Pro, paragraph, paragraph, fine print. Okay, so after my fine print <laughs> on each one of those, we can do a closed div. And this is where prettier is really nice because when I just put a random closed div like that, when I hit save, prettier fix it for me and uh, formats things properly. So what I can say here is my product, if you're wondering what the whole double underscore thing is about, um, you can watch my videos on the BEM naming convention. Um, so product content padding of 1M. I'm gonna do a bit bigger actually. White space is your friend, everybody. Oh no, what did prod, prod cut twice now, product. There we go. Uh, I don't need on top because of the way the images are. Mm. Never mind. Yes, I do. It's uh, okay. It's because of the margin top, maybe on this. I didn't realize. I think the image has some extra empty space on the bottom of it, so maybe I'd have to go and crop some of the images. Uh, so also on all these H threes, as I just mentioned, I want to add a class. of class equals product title. I guess, you know, it could have been, it probably should be product title like that. Uh, product class name is product title. Okie dokie, so then my product title uh, this is where, should this be in typography? Um, because the way I named it, I'm keeping it with my product stuff. Um, yeah, that's my explanation anyway and how I like to work. So my product title will be color of var color primary. Font size will be 2.5 rem. If you're not used to working in rems or ems, it really comes down to, um, you get used to it pretty much, <laughs> is the, the story. Um, margin, bottom, 0.5M. Um, you sort of get, you start knowing what sizes different things are uh, really quickly. You just have to practice with it and use it a little bit. And I just find it nice because then you have your font size, then you can do M's, which are going to be relative to the font size, and you know roughly what, what it's going to look like pretty quickly. Um, I know some people really love pixels, but I really encourage you to start playing with rems and ems. I have a video on it if you don't know the difference or why I'm putting one for font size and one for margins and all of that. The fine print, uh, fine 
print, that should probably go up because I didn't call it product fine print, or maybe I should rename it so it's product fine print. Uh, font size of 0.5m. So it's just half of the normal. I guess I could do rem. Did I not call, oh, I think I did fine print with a hyphen for some reason. How did I do fine print? I put fint print. I wonder, <laughs> I made so many mistakes in this when I was writing the markup. <laughs> you guys must have all been like watching it. So here I'm just gonna do a uh, fine and replace <laughs> fint print for fine print. Because uh, why, so uh, yeah, <laughs> let's just do a replace all on that and now my fine print should be working. Oh, come on, what's going on? I have to save both files. There we go, that's way too small. <laughs> uh, point. Remember when I just said you get an idea? I find for smaller font sizes, I don't use them enough. That's okay. And maybe the color can be like RGBA 000.85. And that's probably getting on pretty borderline for um, accessibility purposes, but we'll stick with it. Even the ingredient list, I'm wondering if I should do something different with that. Ingredients should probably be in bold. Uh, this is one thing you could do <laughs> if you don't want to like scroll up and down, which I've been doing. I'm doing Command F for the for this, so I could say anywhere that has ingredients should be changed to uh, strong ingredients, close strong, and then just change all and it's gonna plug it in for you. So if you have a whole bunch of instances where you wanna wrap the same word in every single one of them. Um, there we go, that just looks a little bit better. It sort of breaks up the eye so we know we're reading something a little bit different. I could play with the font sizes or something else, but I think that's good enough. Cool, um, I wanna move the name of each one of them. So we'll do that really fast. See, this one has less space there. I like this a little bit more. I'm gonna go and crop that image a little bit later on, but these ones are looking good. Cool, so I think that works out well. Uh, let's get down to my bottom here where I hadn't really planned everything out in my original design. <laughs> um, and I'm missing a button. So let's just, I'm missing the text on my buttons, so let's do that really quickly. Uh, and even, I'm just gonna copy my other button group because it was all done. Okay, so uh, I just did this quickly, <laughs> uh, so you wouldn't have to suffer through me doing more markup. The only thing is we can't see one of our buttons because we haven't styled that one yet. So, button, button primary, and we have our button accent, which will have a background of our color accent. Now, one thing I have not done is put in the hover for either of these. And uh, we also don't want them touching the side like that. But I don't want, that's happening because this is in a section. That should be in this section. <laughs> so let's just move all of this into this section because they should be in there. There we go, okay. Um, this is kind of awkward. <laughs> see all our products and then email Facebook, Instagram, uh, order via, should that just be order, order through I'll leave it like that. I guess it could be a little sub thing to see all our products and then order through email, Facebook, Instagram. Should we try that? H three order through I can't read that font at a small screen size, and I also not sure. Let's just say order through one of the following. Or uh, 
I think we'll do that. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that. The only problem is this should be closer to these than that, or at least equal space. Uh, so I'm going to do class is equal to margin. I'm going to steal from bootstrap here, margin bottom zero. Um, I'm not a specific thing. This seems to be something that could be reused. I'm not saying I'm going to in this project, but it could come in handy as just like a little helper class. Um, again, I'm organizing this through like, this is my layout, general layout -y stuff. So, and I'll do my helper class here at the bottom. Margin bottom zero is margin bottom of zero. Um, I'm not making all of the classes because I don't know if I'd need them all. I think that makes more sense or through one of the following. Um, and as I said before, I didn't make hovers for any of these. So I think we need some hovers on those as well. Um, accent. So my button primary background is, I'm going to cheat for the moment, color accent. Uh, whoops, this should be hover. And let's just copy that. And actually, we should copy this one. Accent hover. Let's just see. I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. No, I don't like it at all. <laughs> That's kind of confusing, actually. Okay. Um, I was just seeing if I could get away without making new colors. I'm actually going to do them up here. I'm going to take these. Copy primary dark. And you can make light variations too. I tend to have light and dark variations. I'm usually using SAS, so which makes it a lot easier because uh, you can lighten and darken stuff, but I don't mind doing it this way. So darker is going to be dark. And the light version, or the I put light there, but this is going to be accent dark as well. Dark. Uh, which also opens up these as being something I can use in pretty much anywhere I need, which is always handy. And my buttons are... So this would be X. So go back to primary, but we'll do dark. And then accent dark. Yeah, I think that makes a lot more sense for the hovers. I could probably make the purple one a little bit darker. Uh, and once again, don't forget to add in the uh, primary focus, just in case someone is navigating via keyboard. Um, it's nice to know what they're what they've selected, and even if like even if they are going um, by keyboard. You know, there we go. You can see that it has highlighted it. So perfect. Um, okay, so we want to do our footer nav and our footer in general. So the footer can obviously go all the way down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to do a footer. I'm going to do a background of, I'm going to do a dark background, padding 3M, 0 or 1M, just like we've used in a bunch of places. And color will be white. Then my footer, uh, whoops, my footer nav can be list style of none, display flex. I also screwed up this list when I did it. That's so funny. Unless I copied and pasted maybe. Li. Close li. Uh, let's see. My background on my footer is not working. Oh, there we go. Color white. That's all looking good. I didn't. Um, I'm also going to add in. I just want all my footer links. Footer A. To be. Uh, this uh, color inherit. Um, so I can actually see them. We'll do my 
footer nav a padding of point uh, point seven five m I think text decoration of none footer nav a hover can have the flat uh, text decor duration of underline just so we have some hint that we're we're active we're sort of interacting with it um, and I guess flex wrap wrap And align items. Uh, no, not just. Is it gonna be justify justify content center, or is it gonna be items now? Why does it keep moving up? It's it's kind of awkward, eh? <laughs> or what I could do instead of this, I could do. Footer is display. Flex, and then I get my social and my other ones. My social I haven't uh, set up yet. I'm gonna, uh, and actually I think they only have two for their social networks. So I just got the addresses there. What they'd originally done is image src, and I'm gonna do the same thing for now. I'm just gonna leave it as an image, and this is even if you have an icon or an SVG or whatever it is. Um, image whoops not image oh uh, yeah image oh no we're in my markup now image uh i believe they had facebook logo and here it's an image hmm. ig instagram Oh, I didn't put my alt. Uh, you don't need to put an alt on these because they're logos, so you don't have to say like this is what this logo is. Um, but just so you know, for accessibility reasons, uh, you can come onto these and do an area area label. Uh, so this would be uh, Facebook and area label Instagram. Um, so, you know, a screen reader knows what these are. The images are black, so maybe I shouldn't have gone. I could obviously change out the images and they definitely need to be smaller. Um, I'm going to give these each a class. Class is equal to social link. And so my footer, then I have my footer social is list style none social link is uh, I'm not gonna do social link I'm gonna do social icon uh, max width 75 pixels it's still a bit big 50 and my so this would be my social link class equals social link padding of 0.5 m because they're links and if I need margin I can add margin to them just to space them out a little bit why are they so spaced out now? What's going on? So I have my dev tools, my list item has a height of 106 pixels. So I'm gonna to go to computed and see there's nothing setting that. Oh, that is the padding. What if I just did like five pixels? Curious. No, it's not the padding. Oh, I'm on my list item. It's my. Why does my A. 
Why does a padding of five pixels So I honestly don't know what's happening there because I shouldn't even be getting anything because these are my social links and social links are inline because they're links. There's no display flex on my list item. So I don't know what this is doing, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but on my social link, if I do a display inline block, that should make my margins work. I shouldn't be able to put a top and margin bottom to begin with. Oh, not where it. <laughs> No, okay, so I'm gonna bring up my dev tools here. <laughs> That's all good. So foot or social. Okay, one second. There's this. Where's this? What is happening to my image? But why is this one here? My Facebook logo is an SVG and this one's a PNG. Aha, SVGs are weird and it depends on what browser you're in. Uh, so on my social icon, I put a max width. Let's just put a width. <laughs> there we go, we can actually see them now. Okay, that makes more sense. My inline block, that's working. This should be just a margin bottom though. Okay, and I'm gonna change the background color of this whole thing to var. Color accent, no, color primary. Dark. I might change that to footer. Uh, it's okay, but I'm gonna go with accent actually. Accent dark. And then a margin bottom of zero because apparently there's a margin on it. What's that from? Once again, dev tools come up. I grab this little bugger and start trying to find out what's causing the space here. Hmm. A minute. Okay, one thing that we're definitely gonna do. <laughs> I, I'm eventually gonna change the color of those, uh, but we're just, I'm worrying with the layout for the coding stuff right now. Um, but I would change the color of these, probably inverse the colors, just so it works a bit better on the dark background. And I did that on my footers display flex justify content center. And this is kind of cheating, but I'm gonna do footer. Uh, no, I won't. Uh, let's do, I'll do it the right way. Um, so let's do my one second footer nav and my. I th wait, did I do this already? Footer nav is here and my social footer social. That's, I'm just gonna combine these together because they're gonna behave the same way. Footer social. Uh, margin zero, padding, padding zero. And I have this mystery space here at the bottom and we're gonna have to figure out what is causing that. But in the meantime, let's do the big, or I'm gonna forget about it if not though, right? Usually my dev tools here save me for this type of stuff. But I honestly, I'm at a loss. My main, Oh wait, I just realized I made a mistake too. Here my footer is inside my main. Let's go and fix that while we're here. My footer should be outside my main. And that actually fixed my problem. Interesting. Because it's not adding a giant space there. Hmm. Cool. Whatever. I'm happy it worked. <laughs> I... I literally have no idea why that fixed it, but I'm happy it did. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of space here because I just find it's a little bit tight. So my footer is going to have a, let's just change this to margin, very new margin top 3M. I'm going to double that space up a little bit. 
just to sort of say, yeah, we're at the end. Okie dokie. And I'm also going to do one more thing. Product title, product content, product. Dot product. Last of type. Margin bottom. 2M. Um, I just want to make sure I get, end up with a space here. Cool, so now we get to worry about doing it responsive and making this work at all screen sizes. So that becomes fun, um, especially because I have a bit of limited screen space here. But basically, at one point, this is getting too big. My image, you know, that's awkward. So we have to decide uh, how we're going to handle that. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just say products here has a max width to start with of about 500 pixels. Um, so that's going to be like about something like that. Let's just see if that works. Cool. And then that would be a margin zero auto. Now at one point that's also going to be really, we're going to have to go through everything here. <laughs> um, so I think here is working fine. We're going to have to put max widths on a few things because they're getting too big. Uh, this is working okay. This, the spacing, like when we're at a small screen size, this spacing here and here is fine. But all of a sudden that's really not becoming enough. So we're gonna have to play with our paddings at larger screen sizes. We just have to decide and people get like, okay, this is where my layout, we, we, they create breakpoints around like the bootstrap numbers have just become the super standard thing. It shouldn't necessarily be the bootstrap numbers. It shouldn't necessarily be for this device I'm planning this and for this other device because tablet, what's the real size for a tablet these days? Is there a real size for tablets these days? Um, so what we're going to do instead is say when we, when our layout starts to look like crap, <laughs> you know, is where we're going to build in a breakpoint. Um, so that's not bothering me. This spacing is really starting to bug me. So we're at like 650, 750 width on this right now. Um, you can also do this, which is the pixel density. So you can simulate like higher density things, but it's not going to change any of that. That's just more for images and stuff. Um, so at like 750 ish pixels, our layout is not looking so good. So my first breakpoint that I'm going to build is going to be there. So I'm going to do at media only screen and min width 750 pixels. Um, you might hear that you should use M's and REMs. I, I think the pixel issue has been fixed from everything I understand. That was an old issue where, or was it REMs? There was one unit that would cause problems here, um, but I'm the browsers have pretty much got back up to par from what I know. Um, so I'm gonna go with pixels just cause it's easy to look at the numbers here. Um, so on this, I'm going to do section, pa uh, section padding is going to become 6M, 1M. Uh, I'm still going to keep the left and the right just as like we need to keep that. So all of a sudden, I'm just adding a lot more white space because we're working on screens that are bigger. So when you're on a bigger screen, you can have a lot more white space, uh, which is cool. Now that was also my about us body and my I guess we should do it first uh, dot about us intro we're both uh, padding will become 6m top and bottom so it matches there 1m left and right I'm gonna do a 4m on the bottom, let's just do like this and see what it looks like. Or actually at that point, maybe we could actually switch the about us to flex direction, direction column, whoops, crap, column, row, row. I always mix those up. Uh, cool, so that's working. Let's just see where it's breaking. I think that makes sense, but obviously the spacing is way off here uh, because of the way, because of our content. So that means for the um, about us intro and the about us body, 
Um, so we're gonna put a flex on this. So just flex. I'm gonna do zero one, which is the default. Uh, usually it's zero one auto, which is sort of basing it on the. Um, so this is my flex grow flex shrink, and flex basis. Yeah. So it's grow shrink basis. The basis is like what's the default. Um, so that should just split it 50-50. There we go. Um, the also we're gonna do an align self center Ooh, except that's breaking this one. Oh no I don't want to do that anyway um, save I want this one to stretch <laughs> oh no let's go look at my markup here for a second the body's okay we're gonna have to remove our margins there let's start with that because that one's easy to fix uh, a nice little trick you can do is, except we have to do it, where's my P? So here, um, P plus P, remember that? Or no, not P plus P. P paragraph that is last child. So if the paragraph is at the very bottom of something, I like giving it a margin bottom of zero so it doesn't create these weird spacing issues. So actually, this should not see that one has a margin on it now and that one has no margin on it um but i want those two paragraphs centered inside that space which means i'm also going to want to do so this is my about us body so we're going to do a few things here about us okay so that's good i'm going to say my about us body becomes display flex flex direction is row column 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 we want it to go up and down and then my justify content will be center so it should center it this way why not justify content What did I do wrong? <laughs> uh, about us body. Is it display flex? It is displaying flex. Just to look here for one second. Where's my... Aha, that's why. It's my padding that's off. Because I didn't redefine the padding. So I, I just have more padding on the bottom than the top. So I don't may... I'm going to take this off just to show you why I was putting that there. Uh, body here. Let's just do padding is 3m, 1m, which is going to center it anyway. So I really don't need this. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to keep it. I'm actually, let's just take this. Should, this could go on that and my about us. Uh, hmm. I'm just going to try this. <laughs> Cut, paste, delete, and let's see. Wait, oh yeah, uh, there we go. Okay, so if I didn't have this justify content center, what would happen is this is staying at the top, or if this one was shorter, it would stick to the top. So the whole point of this justify content center is to center the shorter one inside the space. Um, so each one of these little boxes is a flex container that is centering its own content vertically in that space. Cool. Um, now the problem that's going to happen here is they're going to get way too long that way. So what I'm going to do, and my text alignment, actually I want to switch. So what we're going to do now is my about us intro should become a text align right. And my about us intro. I'm not a fan of the wildcard selector, but in this case, I think it's just the safest. So if ever the content in here changes, it's always going to apply. <laughs> uh, because what I want to do is give it a max width. Max width of... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to start with like... 25 rems 
and let's just see if that makes sense as that grows. Perfect, so it's stopping there. I'm actually gonna let that get a little bit bigger <laughs> so we can actually fit all that on one line. <laughs> um, and I do want it not to be stuck to that side. I want it to be on the right side. So right now what's happening, let's just give this a border, uh, border, not this one. Yeah, this one, border, three, pix three pixels, solid yellow should stand out on the purple. Um, so you can see there's the max width, but as that's getting bigger, that max width is staying on the left, even though we have a text line right here. So it's text line right inside that yellow box, but I want that whole yellow box to stay on that side. So we can also do an align, no, it won't be align self, it'd be justify self. No, it'd be align, align, I think it'd be align, <laughs> align self, flex, end, cross my fingers. I got it wrong. Justify. Justify. Justify self. No, I didn't think that would be right. Um, Because this is display flex, right? Oh, there. I want my title has the border on it. Whoops. Oh, no. You know what that means, guys. I need to make this a display flex too. Yeah, a display flex. The nice thing with this is I won't do the whole like align whatever. I'm just gonna say on this uh, margin left of auto. Actually, I don't even need display flex for that. What was I doing? There we go. Haha. <laughs> um, the reason a mar uh, the margin zero auto thing works to center something is it's it's you know, we always think of doing that but if you just put a margin left of auto or a margin right of auto it's going to push it all the way the other way so it's going to fill the left up with empty space effectively which does make me want to do one thing of making this a little bigger just to make that gap a bit bigger there we go um i do want this actually to be That looked a bit too big. Okay, there we go. That feels a little bit better. Okay, so we did the intro right. So I'm just going to copy that, paste, actually. We can take all of this, copy, paste, but this one and this one will both become about us uh, content or body. Body. The max width will stay the same. This will become a margin right, so it's pushing it the other way, and this will become a text line left. There we go. And even when we get to really big screen sizes, it's going to limit the maximum width of those and keep them centered on the screen. Cool. So I think that works out really well. That looks good. Let's just shrink down and see if it's, is it breaking at the right point? Yeah, I think that that's we're, we're that's still looking good and then it breaks there and that's still looking good one thing we should add that i didn't add let's get this out of the way this i'm going to go all the way back up to my original <laughs> where i originally 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 said it once i can find it background image background size cover coolio okay that looks good order online is working but i do definitely um <clears throat> i realized a little bit of a problem that i've created for myself in the way i did my markup is i about us is okay let's about us is good order online I don't want to give everything a max width because <laughs> I think it's going to look weird. And I didn't put in containers. Um, so I'm actually going to, in the media query, so it's not going to do this on small devices because we don't need it, uh, but we're going to do an order online. And I might do this for more than one section. Display grid, just so I can keep my markup really simple. So yeah, we'll do that. Uh, okay, so my order online, let's do that. Let's build in, people ask me a lot. So let's say order online, 
this is like my basic. This is not what we'd want to do. Um, order online, not all children, the direct descendants. Um, and I'm just going to give it a max width. So my max width, what did I put it uh, for that other thing? Didn't I give something here a maximum width or no? Maybe not. Okay, we're gonna come up with a new size. I'm just gonna come up with like some random number here of 40, 30. Actually, you know what? Uh, a fun way to do max widths is I'm gonna say like 55 CH. CH is based on the size of the, the character, the width of a character. Uh, so line length is really important. So max width is 55 CH, margin of zero auto. Um, so if we go smaller, so it goes like that, then it's gonna, whoop, that's gonna happen. I'm gonna fix this, but at least now, like if somebody's on an old device that doesn't support grid, it won't be the most beautiful thing, but it's gonna work. Actually, let's fix our buttons. I'm gonna come all the way up in my media query and put it my button group section. Let's put my button group here. Group flex direction will be column. I'm gonna screw that up again, row. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger then. <laughs> let's do 65 just so I, you know, this. Oh no, let's go back to 55. <laughs> I think we're good there. Um, the problem that is coming up is my buttons need space between them. So this is that BTN plus BTN thing that I got rid of and said I need to bring back. So that would be margin left of, I'll make it pretty small at 0.5. There we go. And I'm gonna add a margin, margin top of 1M. Why can I not have a margin top on my group? Oh, that makes sense. Um, this is causing, breaking everything. <laughs> okay, so if I do margin zero auto, I'm just gonna do margin left auto and margin right auto just so I can set top and bottom margins still and then I can fix my button group here okay there we go so that's what it would look like <laughs> you know what do I need a grid then that works I was gonna put in a grid but why do we need a grid that works pretty well there we go I think that's okay uh, it might look kind of weird at really big screens though. No, you know what? It sort of draws the attention. It's fine. That doesn't bother me. I might make the max width on that a little bit bigger still. Um, would have thought 50, is that 55? You generally don't want to go above 70. 70 is like a lines are starting to get a little bit long. So you're limiting the maximum length of your line. Cool. So there we go. We're limiting the maximum length of our lines, uh, which is gonna sort of do everything. But I think that works out pretty pretty much what I wanted anyway. Um, some of our products. Okay, so now we can do dot products with an S is flex direction row. Yeah, I got it right. Okay. Um, that also means my dot product is going to be a margin. If I just did margin zero, the fl this one looks bigger than those ones. So I'm just going to make sure they're all the same. So I'm going to do a uh, flex of uh, the zero one. Is it one zero? One zero? Zero one and thirty-three percent. So they're all the same size. That looks a bit better. Uh are these hitting that same max width though? Oh no, that's okay. So then my products too, I'm gonna change the 
max width of this uh, to like, I'm gonna do like 1200 pixels. I'm gonna let this get pretty big. And my product will also do that same trick that we just did before, dot product plus dot product is margin left of 1M, I think we'll do. Um, the nice thing with this is he could use this again on the actual products page. Uh, whoops, not where I wanted that. Let's put that up here with my products. Okay, so I uh, ran into a little bit of a problem uh, with um, a couple of things here. So just if you are in Firefox uh, responsive mode, just be careful because you can make the screen bigger than your window. And I was wondering why my uh, button was disappearing there. So just be careful with that. Um, and here I was playing around a little bit. Um, Justify, I turned this off on my button group at one point. <laughs> so just to, to watch out because I definitely want that on so that stays centered. Um, now the one problem we sort of have left for this layout, I need to fix my footer because I really don't like what that looks like right now. Um, and we have this or our, or our bleh, I can't speak, or order through one of the following. Um, and it doesn't look good because our flex is putting them all together like that. So what I think I'm going to do is um, come down to my button group and I'm going to give this a class of uh, button, button group intro. Maybe not the best. Don't mind it though. Um, and I'm going to, I want to keep this with all my button groupy stuff. Um, and it sort of goes with my typography, but because of the name of it, I'm going to keep it over here. So my button group intro and, uh, on that, I'm going to, what are we going to do? We're going to give that a width, not a width won't work with, um, as a flex child. Um, can I give this a flex? Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take this off. I'm being a little silly. Uh, this just shouldn't be in my button group. A little bit tired now. We've been going for a while. <laughs> that would make a lot more sense. Let's go look. There we go. So that's there. Oh, I turned that off. Let's turn that back on. I thought I'd done that in my dev tools, but I'd actually turned it off here. Uh, did I do that for a reason at the small screens? No, we're okay. I don't know why I commented that out. As I said, I've been doing this for a little while now. So, um, yeah, we want to have our justify content center on. These are really narrow, like really super narrow, but I, I sort of want it. I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, cool, cool, cool. So that's good. Let's just fix a little bit on our footer. Um, I think what I'm going to do is footer, 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 display effects. I did justify content center. I might just change this to a space around. Um, so sp that's a lot though, eh? Uh, if I look at my footer, the reason I wanted space around, like space around between would have home here and the Facebook, icon, these two icons, like all the way over here. I sort of wanted them grouped a little bit. Um, alternatively, if I keep, this is where I gap the, um, let's just do center, uh, like a, a gap on this would be great, 3M. And I'm wondering, I think Firefox actually supports this five. It does. Uh, so the gap property is coming. The browser support on this is going to be terrible. Um, so just as a warning. So this is replacing grid gap and it's for, uh, grid as well as um, as well as flex. So if you're using Flexbox or that, you can use Gap. But again, browser support on that's gonna be really iffy. It's one of those things where if it, the browser doesn't support it, it's not gonna break anything. It's just gonna look like this instead. Which um, I'm being a little bit lazy because I could build this into the navigations to actually build the space in there with some margins between them. But I think I'll just do that. We could add a little copyright or something like that, but I'm going to leave that like that. Um, should we do 320? It's a little bit tight here. 
I'm again, as I said, I'm not going to do the navigation just because it's going to take a little bit too long for the purposes of this video. I wanted to focus more on the layout and the navigation itself would make its own video. Um, the one last thing I'm going to change and a few people suggested it and I think they're right um, is people were sort of mentioning the monkey is a little bit confusing. Um, and I tend to agree a little bit. I think if you look at pretty much any food sales website, when you get onto the site, instead of having the monkey, um, they are, or instead of having, the, well, I'm saying instead of having the monkey, most of them don't have a monkey, but instead of having like a mascot or something that's about the brand, they have the product itself. So I'm going to switch this out. I'm going to go find an image uh, to use for that. Um, and we're going to switch that out. So we'll, we'll be right back and we'll look at me doing just that. Okay, so I found a picture to replace uh, the hero with. So we're going to do that. But I also found a mistake in uh, something I did. And I'm <laughs> a little bit silly. So let's just find my hero here. Uh, background image. I'm just going to change this to hero BG. We'll save that. And there we go. Um, I could probably change this now. I don't know, 555 five, five or something. Less dark. Um, at least we see granola. It's not perfect. I just got this from Onsplash. So I would highly suggest to them to find a picture of their own that they can put in there of their own product. Because again, their Instagram page does have some really nice stuff um, on there. And the mistake I made before we wrap all this up is at one point I was complaining this image appears to be bigger than these other images. And no, it was my mistake and my fault this happened. Um, so we're actually just going to, let's bring, we don't need our CSS right now because it wasn't a CSS mistake, it was a markup mistake. And you probably noticed it. And again, I've made a few mistakes in this. Um, but if you're curious how I found it, it was really quite simple because I always like showing you guys. Um, some people don't like when I'm showing the mistakes I make, they want, they prefer to seeing like something really well done. And other people tell me that they really like seeing all the mistakes I make and how I go about fixing them because they learn through that. So I'd love your feedback on that. Do you like, you know, I sort of been rambling a little bit and going back and forth a lot in this project. Do you like seeing this and seeing it in a bit more of a raw setting or do you prefer when it's like super polished and I'm just going through explaining the things I'm doing as I try to do most of the time, uh, but without sort of any back and forth, just like here we're going from A to Z and getting it all right off the bat. Um, Cause I do understand that sometimes the back and forth can get kind of annoying and frustrating um, depending on how much I do and all of that. So uh, all I did was I was using, actually, to be honest, I opened them up in Photoshop to resize them. And then I realized they're all the same when I was in Photoshop. And I went, oh, that's weird. Um, so then I came here with my this little dude and said, whoops, there's padding on here. And then I remembered that I'd taken the padding off of those, but uh, I hadn't updated the markup. So <laughs> yeah, nice and uh, silly of me there. So if we find our products, um, there is the first one. So I have my product showcase, my header, and then I have my products product and then my product content. So I think what I want to do is take my image outside of my product content everywhere and then come back to this one as well and just move my image up, save all that. And now it's nice and consistent. They're all the same size. They're all taking up all the space and it helps lead to these being a little bit more balanced. Um, not perfect. And you know what? There's still one weird thing that this one is a little bit shorter. So let's go and do the same thing, inspect element and find out what's causing that. Oh, that one has a margin. Did I, did you see that? There's a margin bottom on that, but not on the other ones. Why? Margin left, mar product last of type, margin bottom. Oh yes, I did that. So that's when we're at small screens, um, I put that in. So when we're like this, I wanted to make sure we had a space here, but we don't want that at the big screens. So cool, we found another little mistake there uh, that I failed to fix. And so let's just go down to my media query, product, product plus product. And then here we do our product last of type margin bottom of zero. And there we have it, the page is done. So let's just take a quick final look at the whole thing. 
There we go. I think it's looking pretty good. And there you have it. We are done. I really am happy with how that site turned out. I'm really glad and proud. I think I, I think it was a nice site, a nice redesign, a last little minute change there for the hero image. So um, I'd love your feedback on it, what you think of the site. Uh, if you think there's any other changes I should convey to um, Seebeck, who is the community members. This was his site that we that we just went through redesigning, so I could always relay any feedback towards him on other little tweaks or fixes that he could do along the way as well. If you have any questions, comments about anything I did, please leave a comment down below. If you don't, but you just want to say you like the video, just hit the thumbs up and let me know that you did enjoy it. If you managed to watch this whole thing and you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button because there's lots of goodness like this. I make a new video every single week. Uh, they're not all like this one, but you know they're always looking at HTML and CSS and every now and then a little bit of JavaScript. Thank you a million times for watching. A massive thank you to my patrons who help support everything I do here. If you don't know about Patreon, it is a place where you can support creators who make content that you find valuable. So if you want to check that out, I have a little bit of bonus stuff there. I try and put early releases. This one isn't, but uh, I try and release my videos a little bit early and there's some voting and other stuff. Um, you can check that out. There's a link to it in the description below. And a big shout out to Lauren, who is my supporter of awesome. Thank you so much for your very generous contribution. One other thing before I let you go, did you know I have a newsletter? Because a lot of people don't. <laughs> um, I have articles over on my website where I write an article every week as well that tend to be quite a lot shorter than what I do in my videos. Um, it's usually on little little things that I find along the way. Sometimes it turns that little topic turns into a big video. Sometimes it's something I do in a video that I glance over, but then I write a little bit more detailed about it in the article. And sometimes there's a long article mixed in there as well. They come out every single Sunday. So if you'd like to never miss one of those articles, there is a link to the description about my newsletter. Cause I asked you guys if you knew about it and then on like the community thing tab, that community tab thing we can do here on YouTube, whatever it is. Uh, and a whole bunch of people said they never knew I had that. So I probably haven't been doing a very good job of promoting it. It's just been sort of low down in the description that nobody ever looks at. Uh, so you can check that out as well. Also don't forget about the freelancing bundle from Kyle. It has a whole bunch of really good stuff in there. So if you want to launch your freelancing career or something you're thinking about, go and check that out. At least check out the page. So again, that's uh, studywebdevelopment.com forward slash freelancing. And make sure when you buy the course to use the coupon code KEV20 to get a 20% coupon on that course. And again, it is an affiliate link. So just to give you full disclosure on that. You're still here. This is a really long video. Uh, Thanks for sticking around all the way to here. Um, if you're looking for something else to watch, uh, if you watch this whole thing, I guess you got a lot of time to spend. So check out one of my other videos. There is a, I don't know what side it's on. One of these sides, YouTube is going to be suggesting something you could watch and you can always go and check that out. It's from me. It's probably gonna be really good. So you can go and check that out. But if you decide not to, or just if you do, but whenever it is, until the next time I do see you, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.